been able to Okay, I haven't been really able to share it because it was pretty awful. But my friend called me and she said that um, her great grandsons uh, had a, babies and the mother of uh, her his children had a sister that was missing. So they called and asked if um, we would pray. So we prayed and then the the sister wanted to pray with me so we prayed and i asked them what they wanted to pray for and they wanted their sister returned because she had been missing at that time for five days so i said okay and i said let's just pray that the person that took her would be caught and so they had this investigation they went to where she had been they did a dna and um, they found the man and he had a wife and put him in jail. And when they, and then they had another um, discovery of her car had been left somewhere. And he had, it, it was a brutal, brutal, brutal uh, murder. It was horrible. And they found her in a very shallow grave, but They've been looking for this man for a while, and he is a serial killer here in Washington State, and he is now in jail. They had the funeral for the young lady, and I've been praying. He has a wife, and this wife has a child, and I've also been praying uh, with my friend about this child because what a stigma for the rest of it life could be and god has a call and a purpose and giftings on this child so we were very excited that a serial killer was picked up in washington state and they've been looking for him for a long time my goodness yeah wow well thank you for sharing that that god's justice would be done Yes, Christian. yes. We're talking about the courts of heaven here. God's justice. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. Lori and Ken, welcome. Patty, welcome. I haven't seen you. I know you were here, but I never, you joined late. So I didn't to say hi to you before. But thank you for joining and everybody else. Welcome, Caroline, welcome. Um, I'm excited about today because I sense God wants to do something powerful. When the enemy is mad, you can see, you can sense God is about to do something. And I had a glorious week in Chicago. You know, I had a preconceived idea about Illinois, you know, because of all that. But when I went there, it was totally opposite. I felt the peace and the grace. The meetings were amazing. People were revolutionized. So at the last day yesterday, we had four politicians. I only sent pictures for the three for you. But then another one came in the afternoon and we made them sore before they, before we gave them opportunity to speak that they are pro-life, they believe in God and the Bible, they protect the church and they protect the constitution of the United States. Then we allowed them to speak. <laughs> so it was an amazing... So all these kingdom politicians, God is raising up places like Chicago. Imagine that. So God is doing his work and his kingdom is advancing. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for standing with us and uh, with this ministry, your support, your prayers, because God is doing amazing things around the globe. And this is only a beginning. This is only a baby step that we are taking toward what God wants to accomplish on the earth through us. And each of you are important. Each of you play a unique and irreplaceable role. Nobody can be replaced in what you're doing, what you're called to do in the kingdom. So don't feel insignificant. Don't feel that you're not important. You're very important to God and his kingdom now, this season. In your life. And I got an email this morning from 
Gillian and Martin. Would you please take one minute, Martin and Gillian, and share what you guys started in Jamaica? Because we have a lot to cover today. Sabina, welcome from Trinidad. Where is Gillian? Where is Martin? Who wants to go? Who wants to share? Hi, guys. Good morning, evening, and night to everyone. Um, God is good, very good. And let me try to condense um, this that we're sharing. But God has certainly laid on our hearts. And that came out of many processes and many deliberations. And certainly, the Ecclesia group has been a major impacting force in our lives, my wife and I, my family overall. And um, God has led us to start a group and actually came out of another group that we're part of with, um, including I said, Sherbert on and some other brethren. And so we felt that in Jamaica, we would, it could do well with a group like that. So we have started a group uh, three weeks ago. We have had two meetings and the name of it is His Kingdom Family. And what we do, the concept is really just to connect with families and to really share life. Uh, we know for those of us who have been in church for a long time, we know that um, church can be harsh and cold and lonely. And we have seen many families been obliterated by just life and the stress of life. And we believe that a structure has not been, we're using certainly using kingdom principle. And we believe that a structure has not been deliberately form in the kingdom of God to support, to strengthen. Yes, the word of God is being preached and everybody go and do their thing, but then you go home and fight and all sorts of craziness. And I really feel where God wanted to go beyond that. I really believe that the season is now where he's crafting and, and bringing several new dimensions in the body of Christ that will cause great significance and great change. So pretty much the kingdom family is a concept, as I said, where we'll bring family together and um, implement different mechanisms that will strengthen, support, and just lift us to another plane. One of the things that is heavily on my heart, and I know I'm going fast, so I'm sorry. One of the things that is on my heart is for children. I believe a lot of our children are being wasted of way to heaven. And as soon, in most cases, as soon as our children, such teenagers, and even before, they go off and, and we see it all around. We grow up seeing it. And we believe that a structure has to be created that our children can go into and, and it's like they're fixed and they come and fulfill the purpose of God. So we are actually in the process of putting an official document in place because we believe that. And we, we actually in the meeting last night, my wife was just reminding me, we, 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 we talked about the first family and the first marriage, which we know is Adam and Eve, and um, their children, the two first children end up killing each other. Uh, well, well, the older one killed the youngest one. I mean, it can't get worse than that. And we believe that God certainly is touching the family in a real way. And um, so it's it's really much, it's pretty much along that line. And um, I guess at another time when we have a little bit more time, we can go in a little bit more detail, but it's something that we think that God will use to to, to certainly help and to help to build the church. We know how most of our pastors are, so they're not going to receive this with open arms, but we continue to pray and see where God takes us. So that's it in a nutshell, guys. And um, I ask, we ask a prayer for, for, for the his kingdom family. That's it, guys. Amen. May the Lord bless you and prosper you in your kingdom enter in Jesus' name. Um, Family Abraham, family. one second. Can my wife just tell you what the his stand for, please, in two seconds? Two seconds. Granted. What up, mommy? Is oh, she coming on in a minute, please? Um, I just say, go on, go on. Go on. Um, sorry, the his the his stands for heaven inspired sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. And so oh, that's, wow. that's where that's Say that again. Heaven in. His stands for what, M Martin? Please repeat that. The his stands for heaven inspired sanctuaries. Okay. Wow. Heaven inspired sanctuary. Wow. My goodness. That is powerful. You know, I was 
Anybody has any short testimony, like a short version, anything that you need to share to glorify God, to praise him before we praise him for what he's been doing? Let me know. You know, I was, I was supposed to send out all the Zoom link for ne- this week classes starting tomorrow, you know, all the kingdom school classes tomorrow. But one of the most weird thing happened was while I was traveling, I couldn't visit our ministry website on my computer. Anybody could visit from anywhere in the world except in my computer. Can you believe that? <laughs> so, so I arrived back 1230 this morning, ran to my office early morning. I, I created all the Zoom link for all the classes. I'll be emailing this afternoon. So we haven't forgotten. Sorry about the delay. And it was a I don't know what is what kind of technical glitch it is just in my computer. I can go in my office computer to my uh, website, but my laptop, I don't know. So sorry about that. And you will be receiving it. So please keep an eye for the email. If you signed up for the courses this week, you will be receiving it today, sometime today. Uh, Sometime the email go to the junk mail folder. So if you haven't received it, please check your junk mail folder and you will find it there. So Father, we thank you for all that you're doing in kingdom government in the United States. All these politicians, godly, righteous kingdom politicians you've been raising up. Thank you for the conference in Chicago, Father. Those lives were transformed, blessed. Thank you for the group in Jamaica. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the ecclesia in New York. Thank you for the kingdom agriculture in Zambia and in Suriname, Father, kingdom government, kingdom schools all across the globe, Father, in 10 different countries. We bless them. We praise you. We thank you for what you're doing. All the glory belongs to you, Father, all the praise, all the honor because of the prayers of my kingdom family here, because of their sacrificial giving. Father, I bless them with your grace, with your favor, with your mercy, Father. May they never lack anything in their life. I bless their job, their businesses, their investments, their health, their marriage. I thank you, Father, for I cover them with your mercy, with your favor, like a shield, good health, peace, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. They will live in the culture of your kingdom, Father and manifest your kingdom wherever they go. I thank you for this morning, this afternoon, evening, from across the globe we have joined to learn about kingdom judicial system. How do we operate, Father? Your justice, your truth, your righteousness, your judgments on the earth, in our personal life, and to silence the accusation of the enemy against our life generationally, Father, since Adam walked on the earth. Thank you for giving us keys, revelations, Thank you for Bridget. We bless her, Father. We bless her life, her ministry. I thank you for what you're doing through her around the globe. We bless her. Thank you for this time we could be here. Father, I thank you for opening our ears, our hearts, and our eyes to see, to receive, to understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. We thank you for it. We love you. We honor you, our King. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining. Welcome to the Ecclesia. We are going to jump into the teaching right now. This is the third week in introduction to the heavenly codes. Hope you received the note that Bridget gave it to me. I sent it to Heather. I think Heather sent it to everybody else. So hope you received it and you went through it. Maybe listen to the last week teaching again on YouTube. And we have three more weeks today and two more weeks after this week. So we are so blessed and privileged to have her with us. Thank you, Bridget, for taking this time, sacrificing your life to invest into this kingdom family and this ecclesia. We are blessed to have you. So please go ahead. It's yours. The mic Thank is you. Thank you, Abraham. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's uh, nice to be back again. Um, do we... Um, tonight is the third... Don't we still have um, three more lessons after tonight? Oh, this is the third one, right? Then we have three. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, That's three more. You're right. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Well, thank you guys. Um, I really enjoyed this and I do have an hour, right? Yes. An hour, all right. I hope you found something new um, and that you're hopefully courageous enough to have thought uh, practicing maybe already, you know, some of the things that you have been taught already up until this point. And um, yes, so I'm just quickly going to give you like a few minutes of recap. That uh, presentation that um, Heather has sent to you guys is basically a summary of the seminar guide which you, which you have. That presentation was, was put together according to the seminar guide. All right, so I'm just saying, okay. So I'm going to just quickly recap a little bit just in a few minutes, and then I will continue with tonight's lesson. So in the first um, two lessons, you have learned, um, let me open up the presentations. Just give me a moment. Let me just open up my screen. All right. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. Abram, I can see your face. Okay, thank you. All right, so Abram will be my soundboard because I can hear him. <laughs> okay, all right. So I've shown you this picture. I've, I've, talked, I've talked about mercy and grace. I've explained there are various courts in heaven that has different functions and that serve different purposes. You can go into these courts according to your jurisdiction. We all have general type of jurisdiction, which I did explain to you for your own family, your children, your business, business employees, clients, and their families, uh, partners, and so forth. That is general um, jurisdiction. Anything the enemy would bring against you, you have jurisdiction to protect yourself, okay? We know Jesus is our mediator, our advocate. God is a righteous judge. Satan is the accuser of the brethren, accusing us day and night before God, all right? So, and we also know we go into this God's court is in, is in Mount Zion, which is the, the heavenly Jerusalem, right? Okay, tonight I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on these testimonies. Um, then I've given you the root causes, the five things that you have to, if you deal with these things, you are going to silence the accuser, which was or were curses, decrees, and declarations, written and spoken, altars, contracts, and covenants, all right? And then I've given you some golden rules, which you um, have to always remember. So this is like things which is absolutely, don't violate this, all right? Okay, or follow this. So we, we can only enter through Jesus Christ. We praise and worship. Um, we enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter his courts with praise. Don't become the accuser. So you don't take a person into court, um, but a matter and our cases is against the enemy. Okay. I'm, I'm going to share hope. I'm going to share about the second court tonight as well, which is the court of the Council of Judges. And there you would see um, that is actually the court that holds people and the enemy accountable. And I'm going to explain that. All right. So that's a little bit different than this general type of things. All right. I also gave you some steps. How do you deal with people? If someone does something against you or towards you, which is unfair or unjust, I, I have, okay, I, then too. never leave a vacuum in the spirit. So you have to make sure if you break something spiritually, you have to replace it with something godly or else the enemy will come back seven times stronger. So God makes his decisions based on what is written in the I, books. I, I, and it's all about the intentions of your heart. Okay, you guys remember that. All right. And then I gave a little bit about, in the end, the question that Abram asked, which was a very good question. What is the difference between book rolls and scrolls? Okay, so you remember I gave that, um, I explained the difference between the two. All right, so now I'm just quickly going to focus on this, the testimonies. I, I, I'm not going to go into the blood because the very first evening I did go into the blood of Jesus Christ. And I gave you that whole testimony of how the blood of Jesus Christ did testify for that whole community yeah? and helped that whole community. 
All right, so I'm not going to go into that again or repeat that again. All right, then the cloud of witnesses. And again, here you can see all the scriptures. So seeing how you all of you did get this presentation, I'm not going to read every single scripture because it's all here. Right. Okay. Sorry, who is um, Martin? Can, can you maybe just mute yourself if you don't mind? I think it is. No, it's not Martin. Sorry. Or Martin. I don't know. Someone is not Martin. Anthony. In Anthony. Anthony. Uh, it's Infinix Mark. Somebody just joining. They are the uh, one trying to contact them. So I will take care of it. So please. Okay. So. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Abraham. Okay. So the cloud of witnesses, I did mention a little bit about him. Are the scriptures, you, you, so you can go and uh, read up the scriptural references um, yourself uh, afterwards. I really, um, you know, we don't have time to go and read all of them. So, but at least I'm pointing you in the right direction, right? Okay, so the cloud of witnesses, I already gave you a bit of an example here as well with the very same testimony I gave you guys um, the very first evening. But the cloud of witnesses are, they are very, very, very um, active, but it's very important that you, we must remember that we don't go into court to see the cloud of witnesses or to see any people in the cloud of witnesses, okay? Because I've heard of some people saying they went into the courts of heaven because they just wanted to meet up with Samuel or with Daniel or with someone like that, all right? So we really don't do that, okay? You're, you're, uh, we go into court and you appear, you appear before God, the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is going to help you. So you talk to God and God will determine he either summons other people into the court or he will summons some of these people that form part of the cloud of witnesses if they need to come and witness or testify about a certain matter or God will give them an invitation or they will come by themselves, but it doesn't have anything to do with us. All right. So, but they do play a very vital role um, within God's whole judicial system and his legal system. And you can also do yourself a favor. You can go and see how many times in the Bible you can read about the men in white linen. All right. So I think just then if I can just uh, recall by just by the top of my head, I think there's a very good example of that in Ezekiel 10, chapter 10, men in white linen. And, um, Whenever you read about them, they also refer to the cloud of witnesses, right? So I have seen them um, in many in instances. And again, they will stand and they will testify according to the jurisdiction they also hold, all right? So, 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 um, so meaning if you, if you are called to hold a certain jurisdiction and a certain authority on earth, and you don't take it up, chances are you're not going to have it in heaven, okay? God does send us to earth, I believe, all right, to teach us and to train us up and to position us for what is going to come. It's like this lifetime we have is only our training field for what we're supposed to do into all eternity. That is what I believe. So I believe, I believe a lot of things. Um, so... <laughs> So, for example, if you were a business leader um, um, on earth and you were fighting, you know, economical battles on behalf of God's kingdom economy and you were building his economy on earth and so forth, then when you die and your time on earth is done and you go to heaven and you and you become part of the cloud of witnesses, guess what? God is still going to use you within the battle for his kingdom economy. He's not going to give you a seat or an authority or a certain mantle and then take it away from you, okay? That is not God's nature. He doesn't do that. He's not in the give and take business, all right? So he's still going to honor you and he's going to use you and you will continue to grow in that um, position, if I can put it that way, all right? And I've seen this many times in my life, especially when the Lord would send me and when, uh, you know, to different countries in the world for different reasons. And there were certain rulers maybe in that country that did something to shape the destiny of that nation or that, or that did something prominent for God's kingdom within that nation. And then when we present a case with, um, in the courts on behalf of that nation, that particular person will be um, called 
into the into the court or will appear to serve as a witness together with us because it forms part of that person's jurisdiction okay so they work with us whatever we are doing i hope what i'm saying is making sense to you all right so um yeah but just important like i say you can ask god when you're going to court lord if there's anyone from the cloud of witnesses that can possibly testify or witness to this particular case i'm presenting please will you call them into court okay and then you leave it at that because God will do it, the Holy Spirit will coordinate it, all right? So, or they will appear by themselves. Then the water, I also referred to the scripture last week, 1 John 5, verse 6 to 8, that speaks about the free that testifies in the heavens, and then free that testifies on earth, and on earth it's the water, the spirit, and the blood, all right? Now the water, um, you would think, and, and this is the truth, when someone does get baptized, of course, when you get baptized in water, it will serve as um, a witness um, to you and on behalf of you. But there's other way that um, water also testifies for us, which I have experienced, you know, in my in my um, journey with the Lord. And like I say, I I I submit these things to you, and you you must go and pray about it. And ask God for your own whether what I'm telling you is either going to testify to your spirit and you will be convinced by the Holy Spirit that what I say is the truth, or you won't believe me. <laughs> okay, either or. But um, I can give you this example. Sorry, before I before I um, say anything, uh, before I continue, let me pray. Let me pray first. I didn't pray. All right, let me do that. Okay, then I'll continue. Okay, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity again to minister to your sons and daughters and to teach them your your ways, Lord, your legal system and how this work and operate. And Lord, all for your glory and really, Lord, also to help your people and in the end, Lord, to help whole nations so that we can literally liberate whole nations out of the claws of, of the enemy, everyone doing their part, Lord, according to whatever their callings and destinies are, according to the authorities, the anointings, the giftings they do carry. And um, and I thank you, Lord, for this, for this part, showing us this part, Lord, and teaching us ways and giving us weapons, Lord, to use in the spirit so that we can um, become victorious and so that your church, your ecclesia on earth, Lord, and in the heavenlies can become a victorious uh, church and that we will no longer be, be oppressed by demonic oppression and demonic rulers. Um, depressing and oppressing us, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, as I present this uh, teaching tonight, that um, that you will just anoint my words, Lord, and um, my heart. And I, I just submit myself willingly, Lord, and humbly, spirit, soul, and my physical body to the guidance of your spirit. And I pray, Lord, this time will be completely sealed in the spirit, and that no spirit but the Holy Spirit of the living God who created the heavens and the earth is allowed to influence anything that happens here tonight. Open our hearts and our minds so that we can understand you, Lord, and so we can understand this word and what your spirit is saying and what you are doing. And I thank you, I thank you, Father, for this, that I can pray this in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. So the so the Bridget, excuse me, before you continue. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to say something mm -hmm. actually because you've been teaching this for mm -hmm. all your life and it's like a water mm -hmm. flowing out of your spirit man and most of the people here hearing this for the first time this concept and this mm -hmm. truth about the courts of heaven many of them it is very really fresh because it's like you know what is this all about one of the reasons we are learning this is to overturn and cancel the false judgments of Satan and his kingdom over us, over the nation's cities, and to execute God's judgment, righteous judgment, right? Yes, 100%. We, because we, we do want God's judgments to come over the earth. 
because when God's judgments are released from his court over the earth, then righteousness actually prevails over unrighteousness and injustice. Amen. So it's not something to be afraid of. Yes, it's something we need to rejoice in. <laughs> we want it. <laughs> okay. All right. That's it. Go ahead. Yeah. If, <laughs> I'm good. if everything doesn't make okay. sense to you, if everything doesn't make sense to you now, please just listen. Let your spirit man absorb what is being taught through Bridget. And, and it will Amen. to sense step by step. It's a process that you have to walk through. So just be patient and receive this, please. Yes, thank you. And also, you, you need to do your part as well. Like Abram suggest, suggested, it is very good that, that you will, will go and listen to this um, teachings again, because the more you listen to it, the more you're going to understand it, the more you're going to remember. And also, it's your responsibility to go and search the word for yourselves. Okay? So... I already did the went through the travel to write the books and the manuals, and I am giving you all these scriptures. So go and read it for yourselves, and ask the Holy Spirit to then, you know, um, make this uh, clear um, to bring understanding um, to you. All right. Okay. So the water. I'm going to give you another example of the water. We know from the Word and from scriptures that from God's throne there's a river. Okay, that flows from His throne. And this river has living waters, okay? It carries living water, right? Okay, so, and, and, and everything in the scripture, I know a lot of theologians like to make things very symbolic, okay? But from my experience in the spirit and the things the Lord has shown me in the third heavens, it is exactly how the word says things are, okay? Exactly, like literally, if the Bible says there's a river flowing from God's throne, guess what? There is a river, okay? So this river has living waters, okay? And it carries God's life, all right? And um, um, when we built, I explained um, altars to you guys last week, all right? When we built and erect altars, holy altars, in the spirit and we open up those spiritual portals from the earth into the third heavens that living water from god's throne then also flows from heaven down to earth and it brings forth god's life all across the earth all right that is literally what it's doing and obviously like i explained it also creates these highways or roads or paths for the angels to to move also from the third heavens down to earth and then ac across the uh, the globe or the earth all right so the same concept applies these this living waters and satan does exactly the opposite thing with demonic altars okay because obviously he copies everything god does but I want to use an example of how the water actually uh, testified in a particular court case I did and this was also with a business leader that has um, a, a national business within South Africa. And, um, and what happened was there was a particular branch. Um, he had multiple branches in South Africa. There was a particular branch that things kept on going wrong. And, you know, um, his employees would get hurt and then things will break and then they will break into that uh, particular business and steal things and so forth and so forth. So uh, things like that kept on happening. All right. And so then we did a court case and in court, obviously, I asked God, you know, what is the problem? Why does this things keep on happening at, you know, this this guy's business? Then the Lord showed me like a group of um, Satanists that went um, onto that ground and they did some sort of ritual there um, and they wrote curses into the ground. They wrote it with blood into the ground, okay? And so <laughs> as the Lord showed me that, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, how on earth do we get the curses out of the ground, you know? I'm like, seriously, Lord, what, you know, what do we do? And then the Holy Spirit said to me, ask for the water to testify. Now, I didn't know what was going to, to happen. I was just obedient. And I said, okay, Lord, we are asking for the water to testify, okay, with regards to this matter. And the moment that happened, okay, the altars, the, the godly altars that was erected by God's children over 
I don't know how many years ever, okay, of worship and pray, prayer and declaring God's word and, you know, the holy sacrifices they've brought unto God. Um, that altars now being an opening for the living water flowing from God's throne, it like literally opens up in the spirit, allowing the water to flow from God's throne into the earthly realm, I want to say, obviously second heavens and into the earthly realm and the water then washed over the ground, over the land, right? So it's sim so this so it washed then the, the effect was it washed the curses out of the land, out of the ground. Okay. So it's the same thing as if you would write something in this in the sand at the ocean, and then the waves come and you know um washes over the sand, then obviously it's going to whatever you've written in the sand is going to take it out, right? It's exactly the same concept that happened, all right? So this is another way I can say from experience, I know, and it, 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 it can go much deeper. It, I mean, obviously everything I'm telling you guys is just like, I'm just touching on concepts, all right? It can go way, way, way deeper than this, but obviously I don't want to, it's already <laughs> overwhelming. So I don't want to overwhelm you too much, all right? Then the next thing is the bowl of incense, which is the prayers of the saints. We know this from the word, the bowls of incense, is the prayer or it, you know is the prayers of the saints and jesus is our high priest from time to time especially when you do something over your city or your region or your community this is you you must remember this to ask god then or jesus ask jesus to present the bowl of incense containing the praise of the saints okay because in god the father is a righteous judge he is going to listen to all the prayers because within that community or city or region you are standing for people have prayed over you know how many years people have prayed over that community or city or country or whatever it is and we and um it generates when the bowls are filled in 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 in, in the courts it has generated enough spiritual power that that gives us enough legal leave way in the courts okay so i'm going to repeat this again because this, this is a big concept to grasp okay so it generates enough spiritual power that gives us enough enough uh, legal leave way in the courts okay to release a, a righteous verdict or judgment over a city or a region or a community or a country, okay? If that makes sense. So a lot of times uh, we can pray. So even if you are praying, um, uh, you know, over your country or your nation or your city or your town, doesn't matter if you're praying and you're guided and led by the Holy Spirit in your prayers, because if you are led and guided by the Holy Spirit, you are praying according to what is written in the book rolls, right? You are praying according to the Father's will. Those prayers are all caught up in the bowls of incense, all of them. And then if someone just shows up in the court that actually understands this or shows up maybe accidentally <laughs> without understanding it, doesn't matter, okay? If just someone shows up, and you can present a case on behalf of that city or region or country, then, then um, the prayers of the saints have accumulated enough legal ground in the courts to release a judgment or a verdict, okay? So, in, uh, and that again is the corporate efforts of the ecclesia, the corporate effort. So you see, not one person can ever get the glory for this and the things that happens in court you cannot as one person individual you cannot because it's the corporate effort of the body of christ on earth all right so i hope this makes sense all right so important and i also believe this is why jesus did say tell us uh to watch and pray watch and pray watch and pray i mean this is the thing that jesus kept on over and over telling us to keep on doing okay so just keep on doing it, <laughs> all right? You never know when enough praise has been accumulated in the courts of heaven that gives God enough legal ground <laughs> to release a judgment over a whole nation and something can change or shift over, an, uh, over a nation, all right? 
then the word of God, whether it is spoken word or whether it is written word, will testify and can testify for you in the courts. And obviously, the word of God never turns void. All right. So, so we, we want his word. So, so what I would like to do is, um, especially when it comes to to um, bigger matters, when it comes to national or, or regional or international matters, what I like to do is I like to re, uh, write decrees beforehand, okay? And within these decrees, um, I, <laughs> I actually, um, I, don't, I also don't want to go into a lot of details there, but in these decrees, my evidence, which I submit towards God, and the, what I'm asking of him as a righteous judge is like 80% just his word, okay? His written word, because this is his promises and this is his own word, which he cannot deny, okay? It cannot turn void to him, all right? And then based on that, based on his word, so this is basically me submitting his own word in his own court as evidence to testify on behalf of this case or whatever I'm asking, whatever the matter might be, all right? His word cannot turn void, all right? And according to that, then um, God would execute or render a verdict or a judgment or release a command or, you know, whatever it might be from, from his courts, okay? Then the decrees, so the decrees, um, I, I, I did explain decrees to you guys um, last week, so I'm not going to go into it again. And um, I've actually just given you an example of how I literally write decree. I've written a whole book like this, 425 pages to be exact, that contains decrees, okay? And what I did was I literally identified every single work of the enemy from Revelations to Ge uh, of, well, from Revelations to Genesis, from Genesis to Revelations, okay, and anything that the enemy has brought against mankind, and I wrote the decrees against that, okay, which is law. To decree a matter shall be established. So um, I, I can't remember if I if I told this to you, if I uh, if I um, if I if I've even mentioned that book or not, okay. That no. book looks like this. Did I explain? I actually have a copy with me. Looks like this. The government yeah. of Christ. Okay. Yes, it's it's establishing the government of Christ. Practical decrees for the ecclesia. This is what it says. Okay. All right. This book is also on Amazon. All right. Anything, everything I, we could identify from Genesis to Revelations, we wrote the creed, and this whole book is written in a legal way according to how God's ju judicial system works. It is actually a whole court case against Satan. Okay. And everything I could find in the Bible, he has brought against mankind. Okay. Every demonic prototype, every demon, every false gods, everything, and then legally to replace it with the opposite thing, to break the demonic and then fill the vacuum, right? So replacing it with the godly again. And I wrote it in such a way that it is a whole legal book, actually. <laughs> so even if people don't understand this whole judicial system of God, if you can just read the decrees out loud, you can enforce it and you can execute it over yourself in your own life and over your own family. Okay. And don't fight the same battles over and over again. I wrote this to help people to stop fighting the same battles over and over again. This is why I wrote this book. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to move on. I want to talk about this court, the Council of Judges. Okay. Um, now, Again, the, the, the designer that drew these pictures for me, obviously, obviously, I just explained to her a little bit, of, uh, you know, what I see and what these courts would look like. Generally, how it worked for me in my journey with God is, and even today as well, because I still learn lots of new things. I mean... I mean, we, we, we don't understand how big God's creation is and how big just the third heavens are, okay? So so I do see things and the Lord does 
teach me new things all the time. He shows me and he te teaches me, all right? So the designer, I just explained to her, so God would show me before I go into a new place, into a new court, this is how it worked for me. He would show me before what the court looks like. He would tell me, this is the function of this court. And then I need you to come into this court now. Okay, then I go into the court and then obviously just according to whatever the Holy Spirit would teach me and the word of God. And then, you know, things make sense and so forth. That, that, that is how it worked for me. So it doesn't look like this exactly because God's counsels are always around his throne. They're not actually sitting like in a row like this next to him, okay, like a panel. Like this is a panel, 100%. But they're always around his throne. Even think about in Revelations where it speaks about the 24 elders, it says that the 24 elders sits around God's throne, okay? They're actually not like this. All right, they're not linear. It's in a circle. They are around his throne, okay? It's important. It tells you something about God's style of rule, the, the type of ruler he is, okay? So in any case, um, this court, you can see the picture. Okay, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. All right, so you can see me like this and I'm going to read you a scripture. Um, I actually do like this court very much because this court is responsible, like I said, some people call this court the court of mag magistrates, okay? I've listened to what other people would name these courts and, I, and according to what people would say happens inside these courts or what the function is inside these courts, I can kind of relate to them, all right? Some people would call the first court the, court, the accuser's court, all right, for me, it's the court of mercy and grace. And that's the court where you always hear the accuser going on and on and on. All right, and you have to start there. <laughs> okay, it's like entry point. Okay, level one. <laughs> All right. So, so I think sometimes if you just listen to and you understand the functions, it's the same places, you know, people just like name them differently because of whatever they see or experience or whatever. So, but for me, this is the council of judges. Okay. And um, I like this court in particular because this is the court of accountability. This is where people and even whole nations within, within each court, you cannot, I think I did explain this, you cannot think of, you cannot try to understand anything in the spirit in just in like in a 3D way, the way we see the earth and the natural. It doesn't work like that in the spirit. Everything is multidimensional in the spirit. They are different. There are many realms within the spiritual world. And within one, within one realm, there are different dimensions and domains, okay? And even kingdoms just in one, one realm. And it's in certain points, different dimensions can come together from different realms, okay? So in council of judges where people are being held accountable, whole nations can also be held accountable. It's the same realm, but different dimensions, okay? So therefore, if you can see it this way, I didn't understand this for a very long time. What I'm telling you now took me a long time to understand, I couldn't get it, you know? I was just like, because you're trying to figure this stuff out with your natural mind, right? I mean, we are human beings, okay? So. I couldn't understand it myself. So I was just like, Lord, seriously, I don't get this. I mean, how is it that, you know, Satan, you know, certain places, there's Satan, certain places in certain courts, and we're going to get to those courts in our next teachings, in certain courts, there are literally people representing the kingdom of Satan, and there are people representing the kingdom of God within the same court, okay? It didn't make sense to me. How are they in the same place? until the Lord explained to me, it's the same realm, but it's a different dimension inside that realm. So they're actually not in the same place, all right? <laughs> but in the same realm, okay? And I also didn't get, so, you know, sometimes we just ask God these stupid questions, you know, for me, it's just like stupid, I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. And then when God gives me the answer, I'm like, seriously, Bridget, could you not figure that one out yourself, okay? I couldn't understand when I go into these courts, you know, I see God's throne, like always, all right? 
But I was like, Lord, this is clearly a different place, okay? It clearly looks different. It has a different function. Different things happen here. There's different people here. Do you have more than one throne? Okay, that was like my question. Good question, right? <laughs> and then the Lord showed me the mountain, Mount Zion, with one throne, okay, in this mountain. And it doesn't matter where you are at on this mountain or surrounding the mountain, you always see the same throne, right? You're just on a different level or whatever on this on this mountain, but it's the same throne, okay? And I was like, oh, okay, yes, that makes so much sense. Okay, so I'm just explaining that in case someone else also had the same question, I did, <laughs> all right? So the Council of Judges will hold people accountable. They hold demonic forces accountable, okay? And they will hold whole nations accountable. So whole nations, everything Revelation speaks of with God's judgments, okay, and how that works. Believe me when I tell you, it happens all the time. It's not just going to happen at the end of time and when, you know, the white throne judgment happens. I think sometimes, you know, even for myself, the courts, even I myself thought all of that stuff that happens with the white throne judgment is only going to happen. It's like a one-time event. And it's not, okay? That stuff happens all the time. And so we want people and we want demonic forces and principalities and rulers and kings and queens and um, demonic, you know, spirits and whatever. We want them to be held accountable, okay? Because this is, this is how God's justice comes, all right? So I like this quote. You don't want to be in this court summoned by God and you are the person in the wrong. Believe me, you don't want to stand before God. And you are that little person. <laughs> and it's your time of reckoning, <laughs> okay? It's a scary, scary place um, to be at. But certain people, especially if you are a matured apostle, okay? And certain mature kings and others, spiritual elders, you would actually have a seat within this council of judges and you would be able to act as a judge together with God, the Father. It's delegated authority. God delegates authority to us and he shares whatever God is, he shares with us, okay? But, but you have to reach a certain level of maturity, okay? And this is why God has to allow you to go through the trials and the stuff and the the fire and so that we can be purified seven times seven like silver and all of that otherwise god can't share his authority with us because we are going to just make you know we will never restore this earth back to its original design and purpose and the way it was before the fall of men okay or man if we don't go for that all right but god wants to share and he did i mean from the beginning of, from the beginning he has shared his authority with us and he gave us dominion all right so i'm gonna read you um a scripture from i'm gonna read from matthew 5 and i'm going to read uh, matthew 5 so i'm just opening this up on my phone 5 verse 22 Okay, verse 22. All right, so this is Jesus speaking. And Jesus is saying, um, I say unto you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in the, uh, sorry, whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Okay. And I'm going to give you another scripture now as well, as well, just now. Okay. I'm going to read it again. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Now, so which council is Jesus referring to there? Okay. 
I know when, when you listen to theologians, they're going to tell you that this council that Jesus is referring to is the Sanhedrin council, okay? So, so for those who don't know the Sanhedrin and where they came from, they were originally established by Moses, okay? And they, <laughs> that was basically the first government of Israel, right? Together with Moses to help him sort out and deal with all the issues of, of Israel. And it was, the, and later on, many other prophets and so forth served on the very same council. And it was in the end, the very same council Jesus appeared in front of or before. And it's the, it's the same council that crucified him, that delivered him. Okay. So that's the Sanhedrin. But I want to ask you this question. So Jesus' word from more than 2,000 years ago does apply to us today, right? So I want to know if anyone is angry at his brother for no cause, or you tell your brother you're rocker, do, do you uh, appear, do, do we send you to Israel today, modern day Israel, to go and appear before the Sanhedrin and they bring a judgment over you? Yes or no? Okay. No, we don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so by the way, the Sanhedrin is still exists today in Israel. Most of those ministers and, and people governing Israel is still the Sanhedrin. They're still called the Sanhedrin today, all right? I'm just saying that, all right? So which council is Jesus referring to, okay? So let's go to, to um, Zechariah 3. This is a whole court case that happened in Zechariah 3. So I like this, okay? So I'm going to read from the beginning. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at the hand, at his right hand to resist him. Okay. So the angel of the Lord uh, referring to being Jesus. Okay. And Satan standing at his right hand, resisting him. So resisting Joshua. Zechariah is writing this. So he's a witness to this. Okay. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. That is also a very important thing to understand, but I'm not going to elaborate on that. And that is actually the way you are dressed in the spirit. Okay. I actually do another course on this, just on this topic alone. All right. You're not supposed to have filthy garments. And your garment is not supposed to be torn. And you are dressed according to the authority and anointing and so forth that you actually carry. It reflects who you are in the spirit and what God has entrusted to you. Okay. And, and he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him saying. So we can see there were other people um, with them, right? Okay. Um, and he said, take away the filthy garments from him and this is not Jesus speaking, okay? Take away the filthy garments. And unto him he said, so Jesus saying to Joshua, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. So we can see that our garments in the spirit gets filthy because of iniquities and sins and transgressions. It makes you dirty in the spirit, okay? This is also why in Revelations, the people that comes from... Um, the, the people that comes into heaven that Revelation speaks of, their garments are, of, is, are first dipped into the blood of the lamb before they appear before God because, because they first purified and sanctified through the blood of Jesus Christ before they appear before God, the righteous judge, right? So, and then Jesus said, let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head, which the priests used to wear, right? And still are wearing today. Um, and clothed him with garments. The Amplified Version says, with festive garments. So I do like that, okay? Festive garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, Joshua saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways and if thou will keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house. See how God gave him authority to be a judge over his house. Okay. You, you will judge my house and shall also keep my courts. To see, 
Okay, you shall keep my courts and you shall judge my house and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. So see how Jesus gave him authority to enter his courts, to have access to his courts, to have charge in his, over his courts or within his courts and to act as a judge within his courts. And what was his jurisdiction? The house of the Lord. That's his jurisdiction. God didn't say you can judge the whole earth or you can judge all the nations of the earth, or you can judge, he said, the house of the Lord. So guess what? Up until today, Joshua has a seat within the council of judges, together with God serving as a judge, judging the house of the Lord. That is his jurisdiction. Okay. All right. So I asked God this question, going back to Matthew 5, verse 22. I asked the Lord this question, you know, I was like, Lord, why did Jesus say, just think about this for a moment. Why did Jesus say, if you're angry at your brother for no cause, it doesn't even seem so terrible, right? Okay. You're in danger of judgment. If you tell your brother, Raka, you're in danger of the council. Why did you, Jesus could have said, if you are a murderer, if you are a thief, if you are, you know, whatever, any of those things that seems way worse than just being angry at your brother for no cause and just, uh, you know, calling your brother some names, and, you know, <laughs> and to that extent of you're fool, you are a fool, you're in danger of hellfire. So I asked the Lord this question, why? Because it seems so harsh to me, actually, <laughs> all right? And then um, one day I had this experience with the Lord. The Lord didn't answer me um, in that moment in time. But um, later on, I had this experience where I was just, I was, I was like laying on my bed. This was a few years ago. I was laying on my bed and I wanted to take a power nap. Okay. And don't judge me for taking power naps because I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person on this call. Okay. Just be honest. Okay. There's other people also taking power naps. Okay. So in any case, I wanted to take a power nap. I was minding my own business. Okay. I, 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 I went praying. I, I didn't do nothing. I was just laying there. And then the next moment, you know, how, um, how, how in revelations, John says, and in the day of the Lord, I was in the spirit, and then I saw, and then I heard, okay, so a lot of these experiences for me are exactly like that, so I'm just like suddenly like that, God will just caught me up, I'm just being caught up or something, I don't know, into the spirit, realm, and I see, and I hear, okay, so it's not like I'm sensing something or I feel something. Obviously, I have experiences like that as well. But there's certain experience I can see. I saw this and I heard that. Okay, so I had experience like this. And the Lord took me and he placed me inside his heart. And I did ask the father before. I said, I said because I heard an, uh, a testimony from another person that, that had this experience of being inside the father's heart. And I said to God, I also want to be inside your heart. I want to experience that. And, you know. I like to quote the scripture when, with God when I have a little bit of a debate with him. And, um, and I said, and then I would tell God, you know, you're no respecter of person, right? That's what your word says. So if you, can, if you can allow him into your heart, you can allow me into your heart. So I also want to see this okay, and experience this. So the Lord placed me inside his heart. And obviously I cannot explain to you like the, like, the overwhelming feeling of how big God is, all right? It felt to me like, like literally, I could live inside God's heart for all eternity and all eternity will not be long enough to search the depths of God's heart. I will not understand all of it. I will not see all of it. I will not experience all of this. And then that scripture in the word that says that the spirit of God still searches the depths of the heart of the father became such a reality to me okay and then I was I was moving inside um, the father's heart it was overwhelming bright 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 light okay you cannot possibly look into that light with natural eyes N not at all you you will go completely blind all right this is also why you have a spirit man so that you can perceive God <laughs> and receive him because your physical body can't take that okay you you, you will go blind so 
it was so bright. And then we were moving. I was I was moving actually on top of an eagle. Eagle meaning it's a prophetic experience. Okay. So and and I was moving in 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 these many chambers, you know, and so forth inside the father's heart. And then I saw, like, what I first thought was like. Um, I thought it was, it was like dark markings inside the father's heart. So I first thought, then I, I'm like, no, this cannot be. Is this like defilement in the father's heart? I'm like, no ways. This then can't be a real experience of the Lord, okay? Because it doesn't exist in, 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 in the father's heart. Then the Holy Spirit corrected me and said to me, no, this is not defilement. This is bruising. The father's heart is bruised, okay? And then I got so sad. I got so sad. I felt, and I know this is silly, but I, in that moment in time, I got so sad and overwhelmed with this grief in my spirit. You know how the Bible speaks of these wailing prophets? Okay, I'm not necessarily one of them, but sometimes I do get those experiences and I become one of them, okay? Oh my gosh, I got struck with such grief. And I just wanted to, I felt like I wanted to protect the father. Like I wanted to take his pain away from him. Can you imagine that? Me, small little Bridget and small little midget on earth, you know, wants to take God almighty, <laughs> his pain away from him. But that's what I felt like in that moment in time. And then I said, father, why are you so heavily grieved? What is causing this? What has hurt you like this? And I say to the father, father, is this because of souls being lost? And then the father said to me, he said to me, no, Bridget. He said to me, no, daughter. This is not because of souls being lost. This is because of my children not loving one another. Okay. And then when the father said that to me, I understood Matthew 5 verse 22. Is can you think of any higher offense towards God the Father than being the cause of his heart being bruised? Can you think of any higher offense than that? Then I understood why Jesus said, if you're angry at your brother for no cause, if you tell your brother, Raka, you're in danger of the council and judgment. If you tell your brother, you fool, you're in danger of hellfire because you are the direct cause of bruising the heart of the father. And I understood that. Okay. A few months later, I went into a time of isolation. I actually generally like to do this over December. Okay. When I have an opportunity, um, I would like, I, I genuinely like to do that, spend some time in isolation. So I literally just go somewhere. <laughs> into the mountains or something and then I just spend time with God it's all I do I just worship pray spend time with God listen to whatever he wants to tell me and I had a time like this and I went into this I went into a farm somewhere and asked me where the place is because I don't think I will ever find it again in my entire life okay um how I got there and I didn't get lost and I got back home I don't know but in any case I went to this farm some forsaken place and um, the very first evening, I stayed there for two nights. The very first evening, I, I had this terrible experience. Oh, my word, terrible experience. I, I was sleeping, and then suddenly, again, I was just like in the spirit, caught in, in the spirit, but I was in the, in, in, in the, 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 the demonic world, okay? And I had this terrible experience where I saw this revelation. I think it's nine. Revelation nine speaks about... Apollyon, the king of hell, okay, I saw that thing, all right, and what he looks like, and, and he was so angry at me, he was furious at me, but I knew that I was only representing God's children, he, he isn't just feeling that anger and rage towards me, he's feeling that towards any person, you know, that is a child of God on earth, that he just wants to kill me, he's got so much hatred and anger and violence you know inside him and I saw people bowing before him and people were worshiping him and he he started killing his own people and oh my gosh I was horrified by it horrified I mean I mean literally 
uh, when I have experiences like this, I don't see the natural world anymore. I only see the spirit. So it's very real to me. It's like how I see you. Okay. So I was, it was horrific and I, and I, I was so afraid, but I knew that God was protecting me and he cannot hurt me. Okay. And he cannot harm me. But I saw that. And then when I got out of that experience, uh, believe me, I had no <laughs> courage inside me to want to fight any devil or any demon or nothing. It took me about an hour just to master enough courage to open my Bible at Psalm 91. And I started reading Psalm 91. And I, com I kept on repeating Psalm 91 over and over and over and over and over again until the sun came up. Okay. And I was just one, I was just waiting for daylight so I could leave. Okay, I just wanted to go back home because I was so frightened. I was literally sick for days because of that experience. You know how Daniel speaks of this as well? How Daniel saw things in the spirit and he got so sick because of it. It, it was so troubling to him that it caused him to be sick. Okay, so I physically I got sick because of that. Then I wanted to leave the next morning and like three people sent me messages telling me, Bridget, we don't know what's going on with you, but God is just saying, stay where you are. You're not supposed to go home. Okay. So I'm like, seriously, God, person number one, I'm like, no, what are the chances? Okay. I'm like, no, God, I'm going home. I'm not staying here and uh, reliving another night like this. Then I get a second message and I'm like, seriously, God, you want me to stay? I still decided I'm going home. Third message. I'm like, Okay, now I, li I literally can't just ignore God. I am going to have to stay here. But I've, I thought to myself, but tonight I'm going to get, I'm going to be all prepared for this and I'm not going to sleep. Okay. So what I did was I took oil. I threw oil all around the house. <laughs> okay. To anoint the place. I anointed every door, every window, the roof, the floor, the walls, <laughs> like every single thing. Okay. And um, when it just started to get dark, I switched on every single light inside that house, okay? Because I'm like, I'm not going to be here the whole night long in the dark, okay? I switched on every single light. And I say to God, and I'm not going to sleep because if Satan appears to me like this again, at least I'm going to be ready for this, <laughs> okay? So there I was sitting like in the evening and then somewhere... Uh, somewhere in a, in, during that night I, I fell asleep again but I'm pretty sure God took me into a sleep then I had another experience like that but this time around the Lord showed me his people and his own church and his own people being lost okay and he took me and he allowed me to see people's life. It's, it's a proper, proper Ezekiel moment. You know how God took Ezekiel underneath the temple and God showed Ezekiel what the priests and the people were doing in the temple and underneath the temple and the idol worship and stuff like that, right? Exactly like that. God showed me like person to person to the next person to the next person. And I could see their whole life in a second before me. And God showed me why this person is lost. Okay, how deceiving they were, how church leaders, he showed me church leaders, okay, that we know, I won't ever mention their names, but he showed me church leaders and how they're on their way to hell, okay, because of why, because they are chasing power, they are chasing money, okay, they are not looking after the ship, they are deliberately deceiving people and leading other people into eternal um, hell, all right, and so God showed me those people. He showed me um, how, you know, all sorts of things, all right? And then the heart of the Father again, all right? Because of the people that's being lost. Because why? And God said to me, this all comes down to one thing only. And it's because of my people not loving one another. Because of my people not loving one another. Because if, 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 you, if I love you, I'm not going to deliberately deceive you. If I love you, I'm not going to abuse you and misuse you for your money or for power or for whatever it might be. The very bottom of that is lovelessness. People growing cold in their love for one another. And this is why Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 22, you're in danger of the council. Because rather appear in front of God's counsel and receive his judgment while you're still living and breathing and you have breath in your lungs to repent of these things and you still have a chance. 
because that judgment, in fact, is still God's mercy because it's still giving you a chance. So, and that is the end of tonight's lesson. <laughs> On that heavy note, all right. So please make sure if you ever have to grow into a position to become part of the panel of the judges, then you have to learn and understand this so you can work with God to bring and execute judgments so that his justice and his mercy can come over the earth. If not, please stay away from this court, <laughs> okay? How do you do that? Learn to love one another and you will be safeguarded from this council and from God's judgments, okay? Thank okay. you, Abraham. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, that's like, that's like learning a new language, actually. Oh, my goodness gracious. Lord, have mercy, right? Yes, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Here, we have to see each of those phrases you say, we have to take it and unfold it to make it clear. Like somebody asked, how do we build an altar? Okay, spiritual altar or holy altars and demonic altars like somebody asked you know so people might know about demonic altars but then how do we build a godly altar you know mm -hmm. what i mean so these are all concepts that are very new to most of the people here and then and then you said something you said leverage spiritual power in the court <laughs> you know what i mean that's like a, that's like a, how do you explain that you know so so this is but anyway thank you i know this is because you've been teaching like i said before you've been teaching this for so long it happened to me personally because of the kingdom teaching i just teach kingdom like this i just thought i just think everybody knows or everybody should know about this but they don't <laughs> Yes. So they're like, what so, are you talking about? Have... So, so maybe you had to build a dictionary, a <laughs> glossary of words and phrases and their meanings. That's what I'm doing with this Kingdom School course. Like when people hear something, they have a preconceived idea, like the word kingdom, because the word kingdom is so overused. So when mm. people hear it, they have different concept some people think it is about singing some people think about helping the poor or some people think whatever it is but mm -hmm. to to establish the right concept definition that's what i'm doing now i think i think you may already have that written down somewhere right do you have like a glossary of definitions or words and phrases that you use I only did that in this book that I've just shown you guys, um, Establishing the Government of Christ. In front of that book, I actually have a list of definitions for words I use. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe what you're just suggesting is not a very, I think it's actually a brilliant idea. I think I could maybe write a whole document with just that. <laughs> just yeah. like, um, yes. No, so and this is why I say this is why I say people will have to go and listen to these teachings again, and I'm trying to not overwhelm you. So I'm sorry if I do. <laughs> I'm trying to not overwhelm you and say too many things, but listen to it again and please go and research the scriptures and stuff because, like I say, just that presentation you got um, last week has so many scriptural references. So it, it will serve as a very very good guideline. Okay, and remember in the end, our very last lesson, I'm going to do a practical session with you. Then you're going to see it's actually not so overwhelming and frightening, okay, when we do it practically. And I'm going to give you that document with the step-by-step -step steps of to practically do the court cases, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think every book needs to have that glossary of definitions, phrases and their definitions, because that's what I am feeling to have it in my books of the kingdom because i want people to have the right understanding of the words that we use very frequently because it's so normal for us but it's not normal mm -hmm. for everybody up there but thank you anyway so any questions for bridget before we switch the gear here any questions any comments feedback 
regarding what you just heard today. Anybody? I don't see any hands. That means everybody got it. My goodness, you guys are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It means you must have you must have trained them well, Abraham. <laughs> yes. Albert, yes. Sorry. Your hand. Yes. Sorry, you speaking? I, I was speaking. Um, this is Paula. Um, thank you, Bridget, for that wonderful um, wow teaching. Um, I too will have to go back and um, watch it again and digest it. But uh, I think yes, it's. Um, because I've been in church for a long time. And so having a spiritual dictionary um, that you put um, you, that you put, in, uh, put out would be really helpful because um, so that it will clarify or maybe clear up or dispel any thing that we were, uh, <laughs> any teachings that we need, need to be untaught, <laughs> you know? Um, because, like you said, the word kingdom is used in so many different um, definitions. And so I just want to have a good, you know, re basically rebuilding my foundation, you know, as, as, <laughs> as a longtime Christian. It's like so this is all new and wonderful and powerful. Yes. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, I appreciate that. And you know, giving me more motivation to write the dictionary, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I do put my um, e email in there because I didn't get, um, I do have your book, um, but I don't have, didn't get the PowerPoint. I know Pastor Abraham said he was having difficulty with his computer. And so we'll be praying over your computer. If you, if you gave your email to Heather, she is the one who sends that out. So okay. you should have received it if you gave the contact information to Heather. And if not, please give it to her now, then she will okay. send it to you. I think you already gave your email there, so it will be coming. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I forgot it's, it's Father's Day today. Oh my gosh. Yes, happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the call. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Sorry. Uh, and Dave. Go okay. ahead. Oh, um, Bridget, that was fabulous. Uh, got a lot out of that. Um, I My question would be, first of all, we go to prayer. Um, and I speak to the Lord like all day sometimes more all day into the evening, et cetera, is I kind of just have a dialogue. And the question I have is, is it really just serious matters that you go to the courts or is, are, um, are people always coming to you to help them get to the court system? Because to me, um, I have been in the courts before and it, it is kind of terrifying, but the love and grace of God's mercy is like ama amazing, like totally amazing, especially when you know you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, for me, it's really rare. Um, not that I, because <laughs> I have so many things I do wrong, but I just like, there's certain times that I notice that I have to go before the Lord, repent, go through the process. I've been reading your um, pamphlet, which is fabulous because it does explain a lot how you have it broken down. But um, to me, it just sounds like um, you don't really go to courts all that much, except it sounds like maybe people come to you all the time because they really seriously need help because they, they just mm -hmm. either don't pray. I don't know where they're at. It is, is that correct? Yes, well, um... Like I explained in the first lesson, um, if you have, if there's a matter in your life that that you have been praying about and you've been fasting and you know declaring God's, we're doing all these things that you know to do, and you don't see a breakthrough through or an answer, even though you know it's according to God's promises, according to His word, then you know for sure you have to go to court. There's something legally happening there. Then you know, okay. But in other 
because remember, God is not just a judge over our lives. He is also our father. He is also the king. He is also so, so not every time you, for me, I, I don't go into court all the time. And I mean, I also talk to God all the time, you know, all the time because of our personal relationship to him. So sometimes I just go to him because I'm his daughter and I'm going to my father now. Okay. Or sometimes I go because I need to go. It's official business now. <laughs> all right. Or so, yeah, so whatever. So not, no, so no, it's not always official business. And I would say you have to spend more time with God in your unofficial business than, than you're spending with him in your official business, <laughs> okay? Because he needs to be your friend also. He's also your friend, right? He's also, yes, he's also your father. And and um, in, in, in uh, the very last lesson, I'm going to talk about the Supreme Court and that is the place closest to God's throne, right? And so the people that actually has jurisdiction that, that really operates there are the, people's cl or, or the people closest to God. And how do you get close to God? Through your personal relationship. And everyone has that opportunity. It's whosoever will. Whosoever will. Okay. And that comes through our personal relationship. All right. So even in the courts, even in the natural, or what we do, you're, you're going to grow in your jurisdiction and you will growing authority the closer you come to God and your key is your personal relationship to him so for me that's the fundamental thing if that doesn't exist you're not going to be so successful <laughs> in the courts either I would say okay uh -huh. yes okay. yes all right okay thank you good question you're welcome mm. child bread do you have any question or are you there? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Welcome. I apologize, um, Brother John. I'm at the Save America Conference in Chicago and we just finished a phenomenal play around the book of Esther. And wow, at the same time, we have uh, South African uh, lawyer, attorney coming from the courts of the most high God. Oh boy, am I like, I feel like I'm, I'm just going in and out of the courtroom. <laughs> 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 because as you're having your talk and I'm listening to you and I'm here present listening to them and experiencing it, I can see a type of manifestation of the father working with us right now, <laughs> right here in the United States of America. How uh, he's pulling his spirit, his ecclesia down and allowing us to now be the new age, the launch of a new age of judgment, a new age of time, a new age of love coming to his people, uh, Heavenly Father. So I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for your service. Everyone on the call, please stick with your studies. Please be diligent. Please empty yourselves so that this new wine can be poured into you in its fullest that you may be filled and overwhelmed overwhelm the world with the holy spirit in you thank you so much for your service hallelujah thank you daryl daryl is my thank new you. friend i just met him in chicago he was at the oh, wow. and his life was transformed during the teaching of the kingdom he caught it so he's a new wow <laughs> nice to meet you daryl <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you my brother. So, Chad Brett, please, I have one minute. Yes, hi, this is Unika, actually. Oh, um, a quick ahead. question. Um, Bridget, thank you once again for this marvelous um, teaching. Um, when you speak uh, for the Council of Judges, uh, you in the slide uh, deck, I read, that apostles, some kings, judges, and elders have authority in the court. When you say mm -hmm. they, uh, they have authority in the court, do you mean that they are able to sit in the court or to go to the court? And my second question has to do with um, authority. Um, so basically is how do you know uh, which authority God has given you? Because um, I know sometimes God reveals something in your life, but you have, as you were mentioning, you have to grow into that. Are there specific things that we can do to find out um, 
what what uh, in what stage of the process you're in. That's those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Those are very good questions and also very uh, questions I do get a lot. Okay. So first question, I would say it's both. If you have authority for the Council of Judges, you will both have authority to enter into the Council of Judges and to ask that a certain case or must be, or that a certain case must be referred to the Council of Judges. Um, so it's handled, I want to say, by the Council of Judges. But secondly, you will also have a seat within the Council of Judges. Sorry, I can hear myself. Yeah, let's is just find a few out if anybody's mic is on. Uh, Thank you. Sorry, guys. I'm just um, okay. So, secondly, you, you have a seat within the Council of Judges within that panel. So, you are supposed to act as a judge with God and the and the rest, the rest of the panel according to your jurisdiction, whatever your jurisdiction is, okay? Then that leads to your second question. What is, how do you know what your jurisdiction is? Because jurisdiction is obtained according to your authority, right? That is a very good question. And for me personally, that is a very big dilemma we have within the body of Christ because people don't know who they are. And they don't understand the identity. I, I know Abraham also does uh, teach on this, right? Because um, a few years ago, I actually heard statistics that basically less than 5% of the body of Christ actually understands their authority, okay? Less than 5%. So you are going to have to search out this matter with God and ask him to show you. I also do a course on this to help people to understand their authority and to help them to identify themselves and how they function and where they function. And um, this is also where prophets, I believe, also plays a role in helping people because I, th I think where prophets are, the true prophets of God, they will actually help people. In, because anytime a true prophet speaks any true word, I explained this over you. Uh, it comes from the book rolls, right? God revealed something to them that's written in the book rolls. They are supposed to help the body of Christ as part of their function, according to me. They're supposed to help the body to understand their place, their roles, their functions, you know, um, their identities, and so forth. So if, if you surround yourself with the correct uh prophets or, or or prophetic people or whatever you're going to see god will start speaking to you but don't rely on that you have to hear this it needs to be like in your heart in your spirit from god first and foremost you first need to seek god then he will send other people to come and speak to you and he will confirm whatever he has already placed in your heart yeah. If someone ever prophesies anything that you don't know already, you can't act on it, okay? You have to wait on God to confirm it to you personally before you ever act on it, okay? So you're going to have to, and then when you've got it and you know God is giving you something or revealing something to you, it's also your responsibility then to ask God, okay, God, what do I do about this? Because it doesn't help the Lord telling you, you're supposed to be a teacher, for example, but you never teach anyone anything, <laughs> okay? So what is your, your part to play? So if you know you're a teacher, then surely you need to start, whether you teach your children or whether you teach, teach an individual or a small group of people, it doesn't matter. You also need to start taking the first steps in faith so that you can grow and God will let it grow precept upon precept. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Uh, Martin, I have Martin and Fred, then we are going to switch into something different. So go ahead, Martin. Hello. I think um, Fred was before, but let me just take a minute, Bridget. Um, thanks again. This is literally stirring up the water for me. I have questions that is just flying all over the place. However, when you spoke about your experience with um, being in the heart of God, 
and what it did for you and how you felt like you wanted to, to like touch God and just tell him that, whatever. And then you connected to the whole thing of we can't, we cannot do whatever we need to do. And so much of our brothers and sisters and leaders are dying and going to help. I, I, remember, I, I think the scripture that came alive to me is if we regard iniquity in our, in our hearts, you'll not hear us. And I, 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 I hope as we go on in these teachings, you will better able to explain the, the blockage that we, that we, um, that we, that we, 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 um, we encounter because of the different injurances. And it's not even major sin, quote unquote, like the, the regular fornication or whatever, but it's just different little things that we have allowed to become like plaques in our hearts. Um, the other, there's another scripture that speaks about if you don't love your wife or don't take care of your children, you will, God will not hear you. And there are several different scriptures that speaks to that and speaks to um, endurances. And I think that we have not managed to address. I hope that as we go on, you will get a bit more into that. So I just wanted to make that comment. And um, I don't know if you have anything, two minutes to say on that. Thank you, Martin. Well, I will, I will ask the Holy Spirit to re remind me of what you've just said, so that I can give you examples um, like this as we, as we continue. But I think maybe some of it might be addressed when I actually go in next week's lesson. Um, I'm going to go into times and seasons, the court of times and seasons. And there I do speak about our DNA and how we get demonically um, programmed by the enemy and how he, how he um, defiles our DNA, okay? And that causes lots of those blockages and, you know, and stuff like that. So maybe I will answer a bit of that next week when we do times and seasons. That really, you, you really shouldn't miss next week's <laughs> lesson. Because from all of this, if you can remember mercy and grace, and you can remember times and seasons, and what I'm going to teach you next week in, about times and seasons and your DNA, you can pretty much deal with, you can pretty much sort out your life. Like literally you can, okay? Those two things can resolve lots of things for you. Okay, thank you, Morton. Thank you. Freddie, last one. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Apostle Abram. Thank you, uh, Bridget, for that powerful uh, revelations. My question is, um, is there any procedure in uh, entering into the courtroom? Uh, the first question. The second question is, um, is it everyone who should enter into the courtroom? Because from the way you were explaining, um, I mean, I, I heard you speak like uh, you, like as if I was, um, I mean, I was seeing um, Ezekiel or I was seeing, um, uh, Daniel in you, I was seeing uh, John, the, uh, John the Revelator in you. So I become, I've become jealous of that. So I want to also begin to see in the in the spirit, like what you were giving a test on, how you went somewhere, how God spoke to you and how you uh, God was showing certain things, yeah, which were very scary. So I want to know, is, it, uh, is there any procedure of uh, entering the courtroom? Uh, and two also, is it everyone who should, uh, who can see in the spirit? So that uh, we know, because I know that I'm a son of God, so I need to understand that one also. Thank you. You're welcome. So first question, um, this, yes, everyone can go into um, the court of mercy and grace and the rest of the courts and, and everyone actually, when I get to the Supreme Court, everyone can also go into the Supreme Court, okay? The place closest to God's throne. Like literally, that's like I just said, that depends on your own personal relationship to the father. The rest of the court you're going to go into according to the authority you, ca you carry, the jurisdiction you hold. And if you don't carry the authority or the jurisdiction, you need to align with someone that carries that authority or jurisdiction. This is also why we need each other and we can't function independently uh, from one another. Okay, so so if Abraham, for example, has the uh, if, if he has a seat within the council of judges and you don't have a seat within the council of judges and you have some matter, you can ask him. OK, 
okay, you, you do have this authority and access to this court. Can you help me with this? And obviously, if the Lord gives him the conviction and the go ahead, he can, because then you align with his authority. Okay. So, and if we are 24 people together, I believe we can represent the ecclesia. Okay. Then we can, if we are 24 people together with united hearts, perfect harmony and unity, we can do a lot of stuff in the court. So our authority and power is within our unity, okay? So most effective. Second question, to be able to see in the spirit, that gift to see in the spirit is the gift of discernment of spirits, okay? That gift uh, in that First Corinthians 12 speaks of, so that gift is basically brings your soul's dimension, your spirit man together. Every person sees in the spirit. Your spirit man can see in the spirit. Your spirit man hears in the spirit. It just doesn't come to you in the physical because God separated your spirit from your soul's dimension with the fall, after the fall, okay? So now you're not, you're not consciously and... Um, conscious about what actually happens in the spirit even though your spirit man is okay so if you have developed the gift of the sermon of spirits it brings your spirit and your soul's dimension together and then you become uh, physically aware of what your spirit man is seeing or experiencing okay and we know the word says that you can you, you should ask the holy spirit um, obviously, and the Holy Spirit gives the gifts according to, you know, however he wants, to whomever he wants to, and uh, and if you have it, then develop it. You have to practice it. If you don't practice it, okay. it's not going to work for you. Okay. okay. And, and the last question he asked was, wow. Fred, uh, Bridget said she is going to give us a document that explains mm -hmm. the procedure, how to go into the course at the end of this teaching. So, be oh, coming to you. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Bridget, for your answers, patience. So, right now, we are going to spend some family time. It's been a while since we connected personally. So, I'm going to send everyone into the breakout room just to say hi, where are you from? Because we have so many new members, newcomers to the Ecclesia. Uh, just say your name, where are you from, and where you are in your journey in discovering and flowing in your kingdom assignment. Uh, to Bridget, you're more than welcome to stay. So I'm creating breakout rooms within the Zoom call. So everyone will be sent to different rooms, which I don't create it, Zoom created. So whoever ends up wherever. <laughs> be, <laughs> nice. So be nice and kind like we just heard today, you know, love one another. Um, just have a family time. So here we go. So five, five to eight minutes, then it will come back. So everybody there. Mercy, can you hear me? <laughs> can you please mute your mic? I can't hear you. And I yes, think I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good to see you. So you are from Kenya, right? Yes, sir. Which part? Nairobi? No, I'm in the coastal region. Which which is that region? What's the name? The name is in, uh, we have counties in Kenya, so I'm in Kuala County, in a place called Kinondo. Kinondo. Oh, the, okay, I know. Along the beach. I'm so close to the ocean, 11 minutes I'm there, <laughs> just oh, a walk. Goodness. So you get to eat a lot of fish then? I, I unfortunately, I don't eat fish. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my lord that's the best thing you could have <laughs> but uh, so how, i enjoyed how did, in the how beach. did you hear about the uh, ecclesia how did you hear about us um i belong to the cyrus community oh the cyrus community okay uh yes. also pew before i got to the cyrus community uh-huh. i i started listening to you okay mm-hmm. some time back but then i didn't know anything about the community because then i was moving from the the church the the church as we know it yeah and so eventually i got settled in a cyrus community mm-hmm. And I know that when we had Apostle Anderson taking us through for the leadership, I know yeah. I would meet you there. So I knew we were one community and I knew that here I'm not lost. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, so good to have you. Thank you for Thank you. joining us. It's, it's a blessing to have you. Thank you. So what do you do in, in life? Like, are you working, studying? Right now I'm studying I've, uh be- it's like a new season in my life now I'm studying psychology psychology in the psychology area yeah counseling psychology So you know Philip Philip Cheraku Philip and Aida do you know them no, no you don't know them okay, they are from Nairobi But I met them yeah there's a time I listened uh, I would follow you I always follow you up So I know I had him there's a time you gave him a chance to speak to us and he preached and I think he's from Eldoret. Uh he's from Bungoma but right now he lives in Nairobi. Okay. So he's been That time I thought he was from Eldoret. Yeah, Eldoret is close by there. Yeah, yeah. Um but thank you. Well, good to have you with us. Thank you so much for you. being part of the Ecclesia. Uh, hello William good to see you William and beautiful woman there i don't know who that is but i don't want to assume can you hear me william uh oh james from mauritius can you hear me james gungadin i hope i'm saying your last name right Can you hear me? Mirella, can you hear me? From from Mania? No, everybody's frozen or something. Gillian, can you hear me? Oh my goodness, what happened to everybody? <laughs> I think everybody got raptured. Kamil Russell, Kamil Russell, can you hear me? well it seems like nobody can hear me unfortunately so where do you go to church there mercy or are you did you leave the church as we know it oh you're muted please unmute okay i'm saying i don't know what has happened to the volume i don't know where to touch can, can you hear me yes i can hear you So I don't know what has happened. I was hearing perfectly well. No, I can hear you. I hope you can hear me. Have I mu- unmuted? You are unmuted. What? You're unmuted. I can hear you well. Oh yeah, now I can hear you. What so were you saying? I was asking where do you go to church? Do you go to a church there or are you out of the church world that you know it like you were saying yes mm-hmm. what we have normally is a is an online church mm. we have our own church like now the whole community is like based in Nairobi and I'm on this other side it's far away I can't be going we are not actually meeting uh, mm-hmm. due to the covid things but oh. even then now it's it's more reaching when it is online so we do our services online okay yeah, during the day because right now it's at night if this teaching has been a blessing to you ecclesia very much very, very much, much. <laughs> okay wow yeah. praise god 
Anybody else hear me? William, James, Mirella, Gillian, Kamil, if you can hear me, please unmute your mic and say something. Oh. Yes, William. Uh, we joined in today. So we are encouraged by what we have learned so far. So we just want to appreciate mm -hmm. our, our brother who managed to connect us to this platform, Brother Fred. So we're just okay. following. Okay. Yeah, Brother Fred Matsumba, yes. I'm with my wife, Mavis. So we are privileged. We thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. So we don't have much. We just wanted to say, keep up the good work. We are really following. So are you from Zambia too? Yeah, we are from Zambia. We are in the same uh, town of Choma. Choma, Choma, okay. Yeah. Thank you, good to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you again. Okay, thank you so much. Week, every Sunday, same time, we start at 10.30 Denver, USA time. I don't know what time it will be in Zambia, maybe after six or something like that. But so yeah, it's around the, uh, 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. But right now it's uh, 8.26 p.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. James, can no, you hear no. me? James, 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 James. No. Mirella, can you hear me? Gillian, Camille. Nobody can hear me. I don't know what's going on there. Ask to unmute. Camille, unmute. Mirella, unmute. Well, it seems like nobody else can hear me. Okay. So do you have any, are you joining the Kingdom School, Mercy? Are you signed, did you sign up for any courses? I should have, but I didn't, um, I think I've been pushed. We are doing examination. So I didn't get the message until today when oh. you were talking about it. So I did not register and I really needed to register. Oh, okay. Maybe you can do for the next one. Because the last time that... when I registered, the, there's a time I registered and it's like you sent messages and I didn't know that you were send, sending probably to, a, to an email that I don't go to often. Oh, so I was not, whatever email you entered when you registered, that's what it comes to. That's what it goes to. Yeah, but this time in the, in the Ecclesia, I've given the correct email that I can always check. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm closing all the rooms so we can come back. All right. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Lori and Ken, how are you? What's happening? <laughs> Hi, Trina. Hi there. I just think I cut off any house and he, I just really enjoyed having him in my group. <laughs> well, everybody's smiling, so that's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Our Ecclesia just committed to pray for him and his people because he said they're feeling kind of alone over there in India that nobody's really um, doing a whole lot with the kingdom. So. Um, <laughs> Any house? In a house. He was in our group. Oh, 
So we committed, we just, I just committed our ecclesia to pray for him and his team of people that he's um, sharing the kingdom with. Excellent. So I'm excited. I'm like another person to pray for, for kingdom. <laughs> Blessed him with a laptop. So he's going to be launched into his kingdom assignment. Praise God. I love it. Glow with that. So thank you. Thank you everyone yeah. for your. Well, I think everybody's back here. Thank you so much. Hope you connected with somebody that you never met, heard, seen. Yes. <laughs> it was powerful. We have prophetess in here. <laughs> Wonderful. Olika is a prophetess. <laughs> we do this every few, every few weeks, but we didn't get any chance because of other meetings and my traveling, so I'm sorry. But thank you so much. God bless you. Have a glorious wonderful fruitful anointed week and come amen. back with some spoils for god's kingdom next week some great testimony amen what god has amen. done in you and through you and uh, i'm looking forward to hearing it heather do you have something to say or are you just saying bye <laughs> saying bye <laughs> okay. thank you very much once again thank you everyone god bless you. Um, bye everyone next week 10 30 please bye thank, thank you bye. 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 thank you bridget thank you You're bridget welcome. bye thank you bridget thank you bridget thank you bridget thank you bridget, thank you, bridget. Thank you, bridget. Thank you, bridget. Thank you, bridget.